Hello friends, welcome to another video tutorial from Shomus Biology and today's lecture we want to talk about ecological pyramids. Now this topic is something which is destined for uh, class 7 students, class 8, 9 students as well as 11, 12 students as well as graduation, masters and even for CSR and students. So that's why my take on this, this topic will be from a very basic to even talking about few matters which are a little bit uh, complicated means for targeting BSc and MSc students. So the ecological pyramid as we all know a very simple idea of ecological pyramid is that uh, it's nothing but the representation of every single organism uh, living in an ecosystem with the range of their food habits. So when we classify and categorize all the organisms based on their food habits, we start to call it their trophic level. Okay, so trophic level, let me write it, trophic, trophic level. Trophic level is organization of any organism based on their food habit, like what they eat. And as all of these organisms are living in the same ecosystem, this is the only way uh, that we can explain how our ecosystem works. So this topic of ecological pyramid, then food chain, food web is a part of ecosystem ecology. Now in ecosystem, we know that the ecosystem is composed of abiotic factors as well as biotic factors. Abiotic factor means all those inanimate things that are present in the environment that includes the soil, that includes the habitat where the organism is, that includes the temperature, the, the water content, uh, the air, that uh, so the composition of air and many more things. Uh, all of this is actually part of uh, the abiotic factors. Well, the biotic factors are the living creatures itself. So, these abiotic factors are something which actually sustain the life of biotic factors. So, biotic factor, like all the living creatures, actually depends on these abiotic factors to live. But that's not the end. Biotic factors have their own interaction. If I tell you, like for our survival, we need an optimum temperature, we need an optimum rainfall, we need an optimum acidity for ourselves to survive. So all these things uh, are really important, and not for us, for every single organism. But uh, in case of uh, ecosystem, not only we are depending on the abiotic factor, but also the biotic, the biotic factor can be of three different types. The biotic factor are producers, consumers, and decomposers. All these three categories has their own role to play in ecosystem. Producers are producing the, the primary range of energy. That means actually they are they're receiving the energy. They are at the receiving end of energy from sun. So when I see sun in ecosystem, I see energy. So producers receive the energy, convert that photon of energy into chemical usable form of energy. And this chemical or usable form is uh, sugar, the food that they actually produce. Okay. Now consumers utilize this energy that is chemical like sugar, food, and convert it into another form of chemical energy that is ATP. The normal energy currency that every single consumer can actually use for their physical activities. That's what consumers are doing. So they're taking chemical energy producing another chemical energy. And finally decomposers, what they are doing is actually they're taking all this and finally this energy somewhat recycled back to the environment, not to the sun, I should not do the sun directly, but to the environment. It's transferred back because decomposers after the death of both, because decomposers work both, decomposers work both in producer as well as in consumer. And after their death, all their materials that they actually took from the environment actually turned back, provided to the environment. So this is how the biotic factors always constantly interacting with one another. Now in ecological pyramid, we explain how exactly this producer and consumers are relying on each other and carrying this ecosystem 
followed. Because ecosystem is governed by many rules. And one of such rules, actually two of such rules are the rules of thermodynamics. And one rule is known as uh, the unidirectional flow of energy. So these are the three major rules that governs uh, the whole ecosystem. Whether it's an aquatic ecosystem or a terrestrial ecosystem, this thing is fixed. It's common. So a producer is not producing energy. A producer is producing sugar, storing the photon of energy into a chemical form. Okay. While consumer is eating that stored energy containing sugar or fruit or the food sources that is produced and thus converting that energy into some other chemical form like ATP with aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration. And finally, after both the death of producer and consumer, decomposers uh, actually feast on their body to release the materials to the environment as much as is possible. So it's kind of a recycling effect. Otherwise, think about uh, we constantly utilize energy, constantly utilize uh, all the molecules from the environment. How come the environment is not depleted for all this? Because we are also returning it, recycling it at the end. After the death, either the person is buried or the person after the incineration, the body materials that are gets released outside in certain forms, either gaseous forms or the decomposers are doing the work. So now the question here is, when we say pyramid, we actually put the relationship between producers and consumers uh, in the shape of triangle. So it's, it's actually uh, not good to call it as a pyramid. Pyramid means a three-dimensional structure. So what I draw here is a two-dimensional structure. So this is a triangle that we can see. So this pyramid states many different individuals. Right? So let's say a pyramid of number. And let's say, let me draw another pyramid here. A pyramid of energy. So generally, people talk about three. Pyramid of number, pyramid of energy, pyramid of biomass. We'll be talking about this three. So let's first talk about this pyramid of energy because it's more important to know about the energy first than other things. So what we find out here is the maximum energy throughout this, this ecosystem is received by producers because they are receiving direct energy from sun. So producers are placed here. This is where producers are placed. We call them primary producers. So they have the maximum energy because they receive direct energy from sun. Then the energy when transferred from producers to the consumer significantly drops. And that comes the, the second law of this whole ecosystem. In the first law, I should have told you, the first law of this energy flow is this energy flowing in the ecosystem will be unidirectional. That means the energy will not go forth and backward. The energy flow will be from the producer to the consumer. And if we will break down consumer, there are three different degree of consumership. Primary secondary, tertiary. Primary consumer who is directly eating the plant. Secondary consumer eating the primary consumer. Tertiary consumer eating secondary consumer. So in this case, producer receiving maximum energy. From producer, the energy is flowing to uh, primary consumer. From primary, it's moving to secondary consumer. From secondary, it's moving to tertiary consumer. And this flow of energy is unidirectional unidirectional flow of energy. This is rule number one. Rule number one of ecosystem pyramid. Energy flow will be unidirectional. It will not go backward. Never. The maximum energy is the producer and the moment producer transfers the energy to the next generation, next like first or primary consumer, first degree consumer, there is a loss of 90% energy. And literally 10% of the energy received by producers is being transferred to the next trophic level. So these are known as the trophic level. Remember, trophic level is when you arrange your organism based on their food habits. So this is trophic level 1, 2, 3, 4. Four separate trophic levels are designed 
So while the energy is moving from one trophic level to the higher trophic level, 10% of energy is only transferred. 90% of energy are lost as heat and other energy waste sources. So this is the second important rule. Energy loss. Okay, and the third rule. Energy flow. And actually we should put this rule as first, energy flow. Energy flow begins from producer continues till tertiary consumer. But what I say, unidirectional flow will be maintained. Only 10% of energy will be transferred. So if producers have 10,000 joule of energy, only 1,000 joule energy will be transferred to primary consumer. 100 joule energy transferred to the secondary consumer. Only 10 joule energy will be transferred to the tertiary consumer. So energy loss. So we can, we can explain energy loss something like like this energy loss okay now why so we know unidirectional flow but why this two why this two law and why they are governed by this law actually if you if you look at it very carefully this law are the law of thermodynamics the law of thermodynamics states the very first law energy neither can be created nor can be destroyed it can only be transferred from one mode to the other mode. That's what's happening in this energy flow idea. The rule three that I've written here. So energy received by the that's what producer is not producing energy. It's receiving an energy which is a light energy, a photon energy. And plan convert that photon or light energy into a chemical energy. Got it? So the very first step, light energy converted to chemical energy in the very first tropic level. From the next tropic level onwards, this chemical energy is converted to many other chemical energy. So you know, we took this sugar converted to make ATP in, in aerobic respiration. So it's a chemical converted to another chemical. So it's a chemical to chemical conversion. So again, no energy creation or loss. Uh, I mean, no energy creation or destruction. The third one, so that way continues from this primary consumer to second, second tertiary continues. And this, this, this law, energy loss law, is the second law of thermodynamics. It states that most of the energy while transferring to one system to the other is actually lost as waste, as heat most of the time. And that's true because, you know, when organisms are like primary consumers re receive the energy from, from the producer and they use first few of this energy uh, in their physical activities and many amount of the energy is lost as heat. It's not lost, it's not destroyed, but actually it's converted to heat and which is not usable by the primary consumer. That's why the amount of usable energy decreases from one tropic level to the other. So you cannot say energy loss or destruction. It's the amount of usable energy is decreasing. That's why most of the uh, pyramids that we see, most of the ecosystem that we see generally is are present the tertiary consumer, not more than tertiary and even maximum quaternary consumer, but very common, uncommon to have a quaternary consumer. Most of the ecosystem, they maximum sustain tertiary consumer because after tertiary consumer, the amount of energy will be transferred will be very less, like in this case only one joule, which is not sufficient for that per, uh, organism to survive. And that's the reason if an animal is present in the higher tropic level, they need to work hard. It's because they have a higher complex metabolic pathways. So that organism need to eat a lot of uh, the food that is present in the uh, tropic level below so that they can sustain their metabolic pathways. They can live in a healthy life. That's what is really important in this case. Okay. So that's why uh, ecosystems, they generally have this uh, maximum three tropic level, not more than that get three tertiary consumers only okay so this this now this energy pyramid we, we talked all this about this energy pyramid and you know this energy pyramid will remain as it is it will always be straight like a pyramid up straight pyramid so maximum the base will be the strongest to the bottom producers and the more we go into the top of the tropic level 
the thinner and smaller area it's getting because energy pyramid will always be like that but if we consider the other kind of ecological pyramids like the biomass pyramid or the pyramid of numbers which i draw a pyramid of numbers pyramid of numbers may not be the same as this pyramid of uh, energy because pyramid of number means you know the total number of plants that are present so total number of producers simply all number of producer number of primary consumer number of secondary consumer number of tertiary consumer now most of the time we find this number pyramid also up straight because there are many more producers there are less primary consumer there, there are less secondary consumer there are even lesser tertiary consumer present so if we consider this is as a grass producers uh praying mantis as a primary consumer uh frog as a secondary consumer and eagle uh, or there's a snake as a tertiary consumer or even eagle here is a quaternary consumer so if you look at all this the, the uh, number of grass is even more uh, than the grasshopper the number of grasshopper is even more uh, than the frog so this continues because if why uh, this is always up straight and it, actually it's logical to have a number pyramid of status because imagine let's say in this occasion this is the grasshopper which is present here in this case praying mantis or grasshopper okay and in this case we have the frog okay so why it's up straight let's assume there is more frog population than grasshopper so what will happen if there is more frog population then frogs start eating grasshopper so the grasshopper population soon will go down and as there is more frog, the snake population also increases. So as this process continues, so frogs are eating grasshopper, very less grasshopper there. As grasshopper population goes down, grass population start to grow up because nobody is eating the grass. So grass is getting bigger and bigger, grasshopper is smaller. As grasshopper is now decreasing, after a certain amount of uh, grasshopper population size, frog is now not getting that food. See? So the grasshopper population is now very small, frog is not getting adequate food. So frog population again goes down. As frog population goes down, the snake population will also goes down. And then again, uh, this ecological pyramid of number will be balanced to an upstraight pyramid. Now, pyramid is not always a perfect like upstraight pyramid. Pyramid can be something like this. As I mentioned, let's say this is uh, the, the producer uh, and let's say the primary consumer. Uh, then secondary consumer and tertiary consumer. It may be something like this. So it looks like an inverted pyramid, right? So pyramid sometimes may look inverted like this one. Sounds as inverted pyramid. It's possible. So there's a problem with the light. Uh, that's why you put it here. But I need to finish this lecture. So for a pyramid of number or for a pyramid of biomass this process may happen like for a pyramid of number of, or for a pyramid of biomass the pyramid can be inverted it's a possibility but for a pyramid of energy it can never be inverted because energy follows the rule of thermodynamics it will never be inverted okay but for a biomass or uh, for a number pyramid the pyramid can be inverted right but the question is in this kind of inverted pyramid are they stable now the answer to it is no Inverted pyramid for numbers can never be stable because the one that I just mentioned is the moment it becomes something altered as we discussed, you know, like let's say primary consumers are getting bigger in number. Even though these things happen, ecology has its way of balancing things up. So ecology will balance this whole stuff up. Okay. So there is no way uh, the pyramid, although it becomes uh, inverted, that is not fixed. So whenever we are looking at a pyramid, the pyramid looks like this or the pyramid may be of different type. The pyramid may look something like, let's say, uh, like, like this. A very, very faint, very few individuals at the bottom, uh, then huge, then again shift back to like this. So this kind of pyramids are quite, quite unique. You will not find that in the, in the book snapshots, this kind or this kind. So these are something of a snapshot. So let's say an ecosystem is living normally with the biotic and abiotic interactions and for a time period, if you look at that ecosystem, you may find a number pyramid like that. You may find a number pyramid like that or you may find a, a pyramid of biomass like that or a pyramid of biomass like this, but you'll never find a pyramid of energy like this. Pyramid of energy will always be up straight, okay? But pyramid of number and biomass may vary, 
But always, whatever is the situation, the ecosystem will fix it back because it is the best possible practice of the ecosystem to work. If there is more producers, then little less primary consumer, then little less secondary consumer, then with the least tertiary and quaternary consumer. That is the only way to work for a healthy ecosystem. Now this may be altered. Let's say if we introduce a lot of snakes in this in this case. So we begin with grass, grasshopper, frog, and snake. If we introduce a lot of snake, then what will happen? Many snakes. So as there are many tertiary consumers, they start eating the frog. So frog population goes down. As frog population goes down, grasshopper population will grow up. And as the grasshopper population grows up, then what will happen? They are taking more grass, they're eating from the grass, so grass population may go down there. As a result of which, again, grasshopper population will go down. As grasshopper population goes down, frog population uh, will also uh, go down. And you know, as you know, as the snakes are eating the frog, after a certain time, when there are no frogs left, snake population will go down. Thus, frog population will increase. And as grasshopper populations are there, so frogs start eating the grasshopper. So again, at the end of all this, all these modifications to the environment, the environment will shift the ecosystem back. Uh, and the number of the pyramid of numbers will be shifted back to their earliest conformation, earliest structure. That's what uh, the beautiful healing power of our ecosystem. Ecosystem can heal itself. Ecosystem can manage itself to survive even in the changing environmental parameters as well as changing uh, the number of uh, animals and, and also changing the population size of producers as well as uh, consumers. So that is the idea of ecological pyramid. So whenever you're looking at ecological pyramid, it's not like just a simple triangle structures, which will always look like this. It may look like anything like this or that. But remember, energy pyramid will never be inverted. And in, in a, like pyramid of biomass and pyramid of numbers, they may be inverted, but that's a snapshot of a certain time frame. After the time frame is passed, uh, environment can fix it and the ecosystem can be restored to an earlier structure. Okay, so that's about ecological pyramid, uh, pyramid of numbers, biomass and pyramid of uh, energy. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that. Share this video as much as you can because sharing is the only way uh, to transfer this knowledge to others. Thank you.